What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to find partial sums of a geometric sequence. So here's the formula we're going to need, and let's get started. So for this first question here, we want to evaluate this partial sum, where we have 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus all the way up to 4096. So the first thing we could do here is find out what is the common ratio of this geometric sequence. Because the formula that we're going to use to find the nth partial sum is going to be equal to the first term times 1 minus the common ratio to the nth power divided by 1 minus r. So finding r is the first order of business. Now sometimes you could just look at the sequence and pick it out and say what am I multiplying by each time to go from one term to the next. And you could see that we're multiplying by 4 each time. Or what you could do is you could take any two consecutive terms and divide them. So if I were to take 16 and divide by 4, this would give me 4 which is equal to the common ratio. So once we have this here, the next thing we need to find out is how many terms are we actually adding together? So we could sit we could sit here and do 16 times 4, then 64 times 4, and so on, until we get to 4096. Or we could think about a geometric sequence as equal to the first term a times r to the n minus 1 like this. So the first term of our sequence, our a value is equal to 1. So our nth term is equal to 4096. So we could set 4096 equal to a, which is 1, times 4 to the n minus 1. So from this step here, what we could find out is what power of 4 is 4096. Or if we want to use logs here, we could take the log of both sides. And we'll have log of 4096 equals log of 4 to the n minus 1. Now in this example, n is going to work out to equal 7. But I'm showing how to do this with logs just in the event that n was equal to 700. You're not going to actually sit there and find all 700 terms of the sequence, it helps to know how to do this little bit of algebra. So from here, what we could do is the exponent property of logs, and let's just get rid of that stray mark, is we could take the exponent inside of a log and bring it in front. So we could write log 4096 equals, and the n minus 1, the exponent could come in front, times log 4. So then this is going to help us solve for n, so we'll just make space here. So we're going to have, we we'll divide both sides by log 4, and now what this gives us, we have n minus 1, and let's make that neat. So n minus 1 equals log 4096 divided by log 4, if you type this in a calculator, is going to be equal to 6. And then to solve for n, you just add 1 to both sides. And you're going to have n equals 7. So this tells us the value of n to plug into the formula. So now we have n equals 7. We had a was equal to 1, and we had r was equal to 4. So this tells us we're going to be finding the sum of the first seven terms of this geometric sequence. And the sum of the first seven terms, now we just plug into the formula, is equal to the first term, which is 1, times 1 minus the common ratio r, which is equal to 4, to the nth power. And n we found is equal to 7. And then we divide by 1 minus 4. So then all we have to do is just type this into a calculator. We do 1 minus 4 to the 7th divided by 1 minus 4. And if we work this out, this should work out to 5,461. So this is our solution to the first one. Now, one extra thing we could do here is we could check our answer. So if we remember, our series started at 1. So we had 1 plus 4 plus 16. And we saw the pattern was times 4. So if we kept multiplying by 4, we would get 64. Then we would get 256. And then if we multiply this by 4, this would give us 1,000. 24, and then the last term of the sequence would be 4096. Once we multiply by 4 one last time. And see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms to add together. And if you add all of these terms together, this should work out to 5461. So doing it this way is obviously much easier, but once again, if n had worked out to 700, you're not going to sit there and list 700 terms. But this solution does in fact check out using the formula. So for this question here, we want to evaluate the series. We have the series from k equals 1 to 6 of 64 to the 3 halves k minus 1. So this is a geometric series, but we're just doing the partial sum here from k equals 1 to 6. So what we want to think about is if we were to actually expand this, we could make this look like the last example. And we could call this 64 times 3 half to the k equals 1 would give us to the 1 minus 1, which would give us 0 power first. Then we would have 64 3 halves, and if we plug in k equals 2, we would have 2 minus 1 is 1. So notice this is going to go on like this. 3 halves to the second, 
and it goes all the way to the end to when we plug in we have three halves to the k equals six gives us six minus one is five so here are all the terms here and as it turns out we're gonna have six terms to add together from k equals one to six so we could list them all once again but we could just see here that we're gonna have six terms because we're going from one to six now sometimes this will throw students off because they'll say wait a minute if I do 6 minus 1 from k equals 1 to 6, they think that there's only 5 terms. But this is an inclusive idea. So in a sense, you do the top number minus the bottom number, but then plus 1 because you're including k equals 1 and k equals 6. So just be careful of this mindset here. This is like a, a bit of a trap, uh, just thinking that there's 5 terms. So when it's in this form like this, we could see that if I simplify this a little bit, this is 64 times 1. And then I have 64 times 3 halves to the first power. And then I'll just write the rest. This is going to 64 to the three halves, uh, 64 times 3 halves to the fifth. So the reason why I expand it a little bit is it tells us, it tells us here that A, our first value is equal to 64. And our common ratio R, what are we multiplying by each time? Well, it's 3 over 2. So that's our R value here. And now the million dollar question is, what is our value n to plug into the formula? And once again, what did we say before is that in this case, n is going to be equal to 6 because there are 6 terms. We're adding 6 terms together in this sequence. So now we just have to plug everything into our formula. Remember, once again, our formula is equal to a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r like this. So now we just plug in the sum of the first 6 terms is equal to the first term. 64 times 1 minus r to the 6th power. And you know what? We'll just make the substitution right here. The sum of the first six terms is the first term times 1 minus r is 3 halves to the n power is 6 over 1 minus 3 halves. So now all we have to do is just work this out. So this is all calculator work here. The sum of the first six terms, if we type this in, this sum here should work out to 1,330. If we want to check this the long way, we could absolutely type in this entire sum, but include the three halves to the third, to the fourth, and to the fifth. But when you work that out here, this should in fact work out to 1,330. So for the last example here, let's look at a case where the R value is negative. So for this one here, you can start to get a feel for these. You think about what happens when you plug in k equals 1, and that would tell you your first term. So when I look at my first term, I just have 7 times negative 2 thirds. And when we plug in k equals 1, that's going to give us 0 power. So this is just going to work out to 7 as our first term. And then our common ratio r is negative 2 thirds. But then we just have to think about from k equals 1 to 6, what is the value of n? So once again, n represents like how many terms you're adding in your partial sum. So if we have to, look, anytime you get stuck with this, it helps to be able to expand these because then that just helps you use the formula correctly. So if we were to plug in, we would have 7 times negative 2 thirds to the 0. That was our first term. Plus 7 times negative 2 thirds to the first. And this would go all the way on until we got to 7 times negative 2 thirds. And then when we plug in 6, we're going to end at the fifth power here. Okay, so this example here, if we wanted to count them out, we would have n equals 6. And you could just think about it. It's when the exponent is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I'm sorry, if I had to count that once more. So, when the exponent is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that would be 6 different exponents. So, you would have 6 different terms. So, that's why n is equal to 6. Or you could just use that idea from before, the thought process to see what n is equal to. n is equal to this top number minus this bottom number, but then plus 1. So in this case here, the minus 1 plus 1 would cancel, giving you n equals 6. So that's a little shortcut to finding what n is when you're using partial sums for a geometric series. So, or partial sums of a geometric sequence, which gives you the series. So then from here, now what we have is, remember the formula S sub n is equal to a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And now all we have to do is just plug in all this information. So the sum of the first six terms is equal to a, which was, we said before, a is equal to 7. So we just plug in. We have a is equal to 7. Then we have 1 minus r. Make sure you write this in parentheses. is negative 2 thirds. 
to the sixth power over one minus r is negative two thirds. So just be careful here because this minus minus will change this to a plus. Sometimes when r is negative, people miss that little sign change here, but it's definitely something that will show up. And then all we have to do from this step is just type all of this into a calculator. So this is going to work out here if we type this in and we'll round to the nearest hundredths place. This is going to round to 3.83. So this would be the partial sum for question three. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on partial sums of a geometric sequence. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.